Dobrý den. Good afternoon. I'd like to most cordially welcome you to the online press briefing organized by the European Parliament Office in the Czech Republic. The topic being the space program 2021-27 and the EU Agency for the Space program. Now, the regulation which stipulates for the establishing has been a process uh, uh, of almost three years. In the mid-2018, the EEC has submitted the proposal and the agreement, uh, institutional agreement, was uh, reached in December 2020. The European Parliament debated uh, that proposal during the, its plenary session last year. And since there were no amendments raised, the text was announced as adopted. The legislative process was just completed, and after the official proclamation or announcement, it will uh, be uh, applicable retroactively uh, from the uh, January 2021. The agency, which is now soon to be called USPA, that is EU Agency for a Space Program, with the budget of almost 15 billion, is divided into results in the merging or unification and bringing together several existing programs into a single structure and one space program, and shall also clarify the roles of the individual actors. Now, the location or seat of the agency is going to be in Prague. The budget, as I've said, 14.8 billion crowns. Now, we will have two guests, that is Mr. Toshanovsky, MEP for Civic Democratic Party, and uh, member of European Conservatives and Reformists, uh, Shadow Rapporteur, Mr. Rodriguez da Costa, the Executive Director of the GSA, soon to be the Executive Director of EUSPA. Thank you very much for your attention to begin with, and I'd like to ask Mr. Toshinovsky to kindly thank you. Good afternoon to everyone, to all the journalists. I'd like to first greet Executive Director Mr. Da Costa. I'd like to thank the Office of the European Parliament for having organized this press briefing or debate or, or press conference, whatever we call it, which I consider to be of immense importance since uh, the activities and achievements of the European Parliament uh, constitute a major step of major importance for the future. I will just uh, briefly uh, summarize what uh, happened or what preceded. When I was first elected into the European Parliament in 2009, uh, the legislature uh, for the management of Galileo and Agnos was on the agenda. Then, uh, those who remember it, uh, that was a project taken as a PPP project with the participation of commercial entities who, slightly before, they, uh, actually... Um, wrapped up their activities in Galileo, and the Galileo was uh, actually uh, stipulated or provided for by a brand new legislation. Then I was the rapporteur. I had the pleasure to be the rapporteur for the rules of that function. And this was uh, to be only within the scope of the EU bodies. Thus, GSA was set up or established as another agency, and since I was a rapporteur then already, it was extremely complex, by the way, the, well, the days of deep crises, so it took almost two years to deal with it all, and it was a true challenge. Nevertheless, thanks to that, I had the pleasure of helping to move the GSA agency to Prague. Another important step was uh, several years ago, the debate or discussions on Copernicus program, that means uh, the errors observation, monitoring, and uh, within Copernicus, we managed, which is extremely important from today's perspective, that the door was left open to the exploitation of the experience um, 
gained by GSA in the field of uh, security and marketing. Thanks to the experts or staff of GSA, top quality security and marketing agency was seated or located in Prague. Especially the security aspect was of paramount importance and an example of how to guarantee safety and security for highly um, significant matters. Since if such a system is abused, it may jeopardize the very existence or it may be of major uh, threat. As our colleague said roughly three years ago, the commission within the financial package form uh, MFF uh, presented the budget for space program and followed, then followed three years of very challenging debates and discussions since uh, we had to also consider the European Space Agency, GSA, their mutual communication, interrelationships, plus their relationship to the EC, all that thanks to unswerving activities of Maximilian Salini that was uh, a success story. The, thus, yesterday or last night, uh, the project was approved since there were no amendments. It was then announced uh, 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 as adopted and voted on today. Commission then suggested 16 billion euro to be the budget under the MFF. We did our best to and pushed for an increase and an almost the amount of almost 15.15 billion euro in current prices were approved. That means this is the money envelope or financial envelope for this program to be managed and run from the Prague head office. And the important thing is that it facilitates uh, transfers between the budgets um, for individual components. Since uh, some years is a long period of time, and you never know what may occur within this long period. This space project means a major strengthening of the Prague agency. It's going to rest on four pillars or components, better to say. One of um, the uh, already existing ones are the Galileo system. And uh, I don't think I should speak about Galileo in details now. In detail, then comes the EGNOS, European Geostationary Stationary Navigation of Relay System, our service, which also is existing and is a technical and technology, so to say, background for Galileo. It also, since the old system is gradually replaced by the new technology, it increases the accuracy of signal of global navigation system. Copernicus, the third part or component, that's a fleet of uh, satellites orbiting the Earth used in agriculture and farming and climate uh, tracking or uh, precision and high definition data are provided as well as imagery. And uh, now we talk about the GovSat com component, uh, which is to guarantee a safe and secure communication. At the same time, it'll be one of the New, uh, also a new component is the SSA, which is important for uh, tracking and surveying the closer and more remote uh, parts of the space. In the future, it's the space situation awareness. Also, we talk about the uh, use of uh, Internet in space. 
that is related to the Starlink satellite internet constellations of mass systems. And uh, since these new projects um, were included into the agency, the agency uh, has become EU agency for the space program, covering all the space uh, European space programs. I believe that for Prague, that marks a major change since uh, this is uh, the largest agency, space agency, that will manage and run the programs. All the details, uh, however, will be covered or presented by Mr. Da Costa, Executive Director. I'm truly proud and happy that the agency is established. Those three years were pretty challenging and demanding. There are very many stakeholders involved. And um, I know all the people working for the agency who are truly uh, persons of international stature with major uh, expertise, people who are committed to the cause. But um, proper conditions will have to be created for their activities. Once again, let me thank the agency for their achievements. And I also wish to thank our representation, permanent representation uh, to the EU who have helped immensely. And it's thanks to Mr. Zajcek, the ambassador, that all turned out well. Um, we should also express uh, acknowledgements and most cordial thanks to the executive director, Mr. Da Costa, who boards the train, fast moving train. I also wish to thank Carlos Perovic, who was or used to be the director and who certainly achieved a lot and helped uh, tackle or rather manage those. Uh, uh, diseases, initial diseases or deficiencies of the system. There is still a lot to tackle, of course. It's high uh, risk um, activity or arena within which we still have to learn to um, find our footing. Thank you. Thank you once again for the success. We do not fully appreciate or recognize uh, this uh, paramount success. But thanks to that, the Czech Republic is going to become the leader, so to say, uh, in the uh, research projects within um, space. Thank you very much. Kosmických technologií, které budou odsud nějakým způsobem manažovány koordinovány a myslím si, že je to skutečně velká, velká záležitost. Takže ještě jednou děkuji všem, kteří tomu pomohli. I forgot to mention also the contribution of the Ministry of Transport. I'm sorry for that. Thanks, Ministry of Transport. Děkuji panu europoslanci Tošinovskému za jeho představu. Uh, Honourable Member of the European Parliament and Shadow Rapporteur, Mr. Tojanovsky, dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you for inviting me as the Executive Director of the new European Union Agency for the Space Programme. I want to specially thank the European Parliament and in particular Member of Parliament, Mr. Tojanovsky, for their constant support to the EU Space Programme and to our agency here in the Czech Republic in Prague. As Mr. Shadow Rapporteur announced, the EU legislators have confirmed with a new regulation 14.88 billion euros for one single EU space program. This marks the beginning of a new era for the European Union as a key space player. In Europe, we have talents, we have the knowledge, we have the technology, and we have incredible opportunities in front of us. And our new agency 
the European Union Agency for the Space Programme, based in Prague, is ready to play a crucial role in achieving the European Union ambitions for space, building on the legacy of the GSA. Today, more and more economies, our society and our safety are depending on space. Space is everywhere. It is in your car, it is in your phone, it is in your bank, it is in the tractors, it is even in the tram that you take here in Prague. Everywhere is Galileo. Space brings jobs. The EU space industry has today created an estimated 250,000 jobs, a number which we can nearly double to 400,000 by 2025. Space brings business opportunities. For satellite navigation, for instance, the European downstream space market using satellite navigation because its revenues are expected to grow to 65 billion euro in 2029, according to our market report. For Earth observation, the, down the downstream sector in Europe shows stable growth over the years and is expected to maintain a compound annual growth rate above 6% in the coming years. For each euro invested in space, the return for the European economy is between 4 and 10 euros, depending on the areas of investment. The security and safety of the Union and of its member states are also depending on space technologies. A strong EU space program is essential to keep our strategic autonomy and freedom of our actions. You understand how space is an essential enabler to answer the various challenges in front of us. Climate change, digital transformation, post-pandemic economic recovery. Europe has now all it takes to be a space leader. But we have seen how this is a very changing and dynamic environment. So this regulation is coming at the right time and is giving Europe the means to lead those evolutions. Together with our partners, we are ready to make the EU space ambitions a reality. We will boost our support to reinforce the dynamic and innovative downstream sector because we want society to benefit more from secured space-based services. We will continue delivering and enhancing safe and secured space-based services, Galileo and EGNOS. With more than 2 billion devices using Galileo worldwide, we can say that we have a convincing track record. We also promote the commercial use and thus the market uptake of Copernicus in close coordination with all the involved partners. And we will pursue our mission to coordinate the user aspects of GovSatcom, serving the needs of citizens and of the EU member states. USPA will also be in charge of security accreditation activities of all components of the EU space program. We are committed to getting the best out of the EU space program components, Galileo, EGNOS, Copernicus, and the upcoming of SATCOM. And we will deliver even with challenging times ahead of us. Europe is committed to winning the climate change race by turning the, cli the continent climate neutral by 2050, while ensuring financial recovery post COVID and job creation in a digitally enhanced environment. USPA will be reinforcing Europe's dynamic and innovative space sector by forging synergies based on data coming from the EU space program components. For example, 
precision farming applications that allow sustainable land management and reduction of fertilizer use are made possible by combining Galileo, Egnos, and Copernicus. Also, urban and network planning becomes more sustainable when using positioning and earth observation data, while aviation emissions decrease when airplanes land. Dear Mr. Shadow Rapporteur, dear ladies and gentlemen, by joining hands with the European Commission, the Member States and our counterparts at the European Space Agency, we at USPA, with our team, we are ready to implement the EU space program and make the EU ambitions a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Mr. Da Costa, for your introductory comment. And now we may get to the questions of the journalists. The first journalist is Victor Daniel, the radio journalist in Brussels, who has a question to both guests. Yes, thank you very much. My first question is on Mr. Da Costa. I hope we can hear each other well. Uh, I would like to ask you what this, all these changes you have just described will mean for the relationship between Prague Agency and ESA. And uh, my second question, or maybe if you also give us some concrete examples, if, if there is something really specific that uh, maybe uh, ESA will um, cooperate, in which area will cooperate more now with, with, with GSA or vice versa. And my second question is uh, for Mr. Toshinovsky. Mr. Toshinovsky, you have started to talk about it. Uh, what will be the impact uh, to the Czech Republic uh, when uh, taking into account the uh, enlargement of this agency? Would you be a bit more specific um, and tell us more uh, about some specific areas where uh, there will be certain benefits felt? Thank you very much. Thank you, and I hand the floor over to Mr. Da Costa. Thank you very much. The implementation of the Youth Space Programme it will be uh, a joint work together with the European Commission and together with the European Space Agency. And I think this is clear. USPA, the military here based in Prague, will work hands in hand hands with the European Commission and with the European Space Agency. And this is how the Parliament and the Council uh, have as well decided, because the regulation that is being approved now exactly forces that and foresees clear areas of responsibility for USPA with areas in the field of the exploitation management, the areas of security, and the areas of user uptake, downstream, and innovation. Foresees as well an important contribution of the European Space Agency in areas of de uh, research, development, implementation of programs. So, together, uh, working jointly in the EU space program, hands in hands, we will be successful. Thank you, Mr. Toshenovsky. Uh, well, when it comes to the specific benefits, uh, well, EU SPA will have to cover a much broader scope than the previous uh, uh, agency. Nevertheless, there must be more negotiations uh, to be carried out, uh, especially when it comes to the staffing increase of uh, content. So this is quite a difficult issue. Uh, we will have to discuss it very thoroughly with the European Commission, and obviously with also the capital of Prague, plus other institutions or entities. Uh, some negotiations are running already, and uh, no doubt, there will be also certain impacts felt for the new agency. As far as uh, the business uh, involvement is concerned, uh, uh, well, uh, it will also depend on our universities, uh, for instance, uh, to what extent uh, we may use them in seeking new technologies, new technical measures, uh, use of some new technical applications, uh, because um, Perhaps now we are establishing the agency, and uh, still we will have to use uh, uh, the satellites that were launched 10 years ago. 
and therefore we have to come up with some new approaches and new competitions and uh, the fact that the agency is based in Prague so it doesn't give us a priority but still the local environment presence uh, give us some uh, advantages uh, as for the applications, uh, well, uh, this uh, step will generate a lot of new applications. Uh, and uh, in the present agency, there is a section focusing on new applications, uh, management of drones. And I don't know what to, what I should enumerate because I do not know all of them. So this may be the specific point. Uh, uh, development, uh, further development of uh, the agency's capacities. So, and it will very much depend on how we will just approach it and how handy it will be. Thank you very much, Mr. Toshenovsky. And uh, for the time being, uh, there is no one who would like to ask a question. Uh, Mr. Daniek would like to pose another question. You have the floor. Yes, thank you very much for the opportunity. I would have uh, one more question. I'm not sure who of the speakers would like to answer, but uh, I, I, I would like to ask you about the global view on space industry, let's say, because we can see that the industry is uh, really rapidly evolving. There is a lot of private investors with a lot of private companies that are now very active. And I would like to ask what this would, will mean for the new agency in Prague. Uh, if you see some competition, if this is a more hard uh, environment for, for the agency to function. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for, um, uh, thank you for the question. Um, indeed, uh, your analysis is uh, absolutely correct. Uh, the space environment worldwide uh, is extremely dynamic. But there are also for that. It is because space creates value, creates value in the economy, creates value in the society, creates value also, as I mentioned before, uh, in our safety and security. And whereas the private actors will, of course, continue having uh, their very fundamental role in the evolution and transformation of the EU space, of the, or of the global space, and also of the EU space um, environment, uh, there is a very specific place and very important place for an agency uh, like USPA. USPA will have a very fundamental role, for example, in ensuring uh, that the investments that are done uh, in the space assets, so in the satellites, in the control centers, in the stations, transform into benefits by providing reliable, capable services of Galileo and Agnos, for example, but also making sure that this arrives to the final users. And the final users are very diverse. Uh, we have final users in the area of road transport, railway, maritime, uh, agriculture, energy, etc., etc. There are a plenitude of economic sectors that benefit from space-based technologies. And it is our role as a public institution and as a public actor, indeed to foster that, to help that, to translate what at times is complex space technology, even complex space language, in the reality of the user sector, in the reality of the user. So that the user, that can be the driver, can be the, can be the agriculture uh, actor, et cetera, et cetera, can benefit, can understand the benefits of space and can take those benefits, for example, uh, in the form of applications. Uh, if you see all this together, this is indeed part of a significant evolution of space that is ongoing, it has been ongoing, but now with the EU space program will be further boosted uh, because we believe that more and more space will become a key tool for the day-to-day -day, uh, of our lives, of our economy, our economic sectors, of course, as well, our safety and our security. Thanks, Mr. Toshinovsky. Do I want to respond? 
Well, I guess that Mr. Da Costa, the executive director, has said all, said it all, perhaps uh, in multiple aspects or things. We will not be able to say whether you are connected not only to the GPS, US GPS, or Russian satellite system, or what. Simply, there'll be a mixture of uh, things, Galileo included, and um, many things will not be even seen or obvious, and it will become a part and parcel of our everyday life without our uh, perception, you know, uh, ranging from TV, sports, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Thank you for your answers. I can't see any more questions right now on the part of the journalists. So if there are no more questions, even though we have got many journalists listening to you, but obviously you have covered it all in your opening remarks and in your answers. Let me therefore thank you very much for being with us and I wish you the best of success in the future and we'll be looking to seeing and hearing you again in the future. Bye-bye. Thank you very much again. Thank, thank you for the invitation uh, and also uh, for this opportunity because I think it is important uh, indeed to mention that also here in Prague and in the Czech Republic, Galileo is present, uh, EGNOS is present uh, in the, you may have followed that we have deployed EGNOS in many airports, uh, in the Motel Hospital, uh, there were quite some activities. Prague trams are are uh, are using Galileo, so uh, very happy to contribute today uh, and also to to present our new agency.